Hi everyone, it's Ishan from FunFTC, and we're going to be doing another analysis today with a previous world record set by Team 11260, Upper Creek Robotics, and Team 18137 at the Colorado Southwest Metro Qualifier. Let's get right into it. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now is supported by Kettering University. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it's not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. All right, starting out this match, this is one of the finals matches in this event, so a lot of stakes on the line. Um, we got 18137 in Upper Creek on the Red Alliance, um, and they're going to be the main alliance that we focus on here in this match. So let's go ahead and get right into this. We got Autonomous right here, right? Mid, mid scoring Autonomous, so they could have probably scored even higher had it been a high scoring Autonomous, but there's one. Um, that's two in the high goal, three in the high goal. Oh, and they bounce one out, so there, there's a miss there from up a creek. So they, they're able to get three in the high goal, and they're going to do a fifth cycle here. So five block cycles with their turret, and that's really setting the pace for this match, right? You could see how quickly and efficiently they were able to score. They took a path that was just forward and backwards, and they would strafe over to the left with their mechanum wheels. And because they're a narrow bot, um, they're able to do that really easily, uh, going through the gap rate. Uh, gap right here and then they use their turret to do all the turning so their robot is always facing in one direction and that's what allows them to do these cycles so quickly they end the the match in the in the warehouse that allows them to get out of the way of their partner who's now going to come you're going to see their partner their partner is going to make a beeline to get into the warehouse and so watch how quickly after this transition upper creek's going to move over here and that's going to allow them to be set up well for this match so right, up a creek already, two seconds into the match, out of the way of their partner, and they're going to be in a good position to just go back and forth along this axis and uh, score into the shared hub. And one thing I find really interesting here is it did not look like they were picking what blocks or what balls to pick up for the shared hub, right? We know that the balls are lighter than the blocks, and... It looks like Upper Creek was just caring about getting stuff on the shared shipping hub rather than what they put on the shared shipping hub. And that led to these two balls falling off the shared shipping hub. I think that the strategy works at a lower level where you're not fighting for the shared hub, right? The opposing alliance not really going for the shared hub. But when we get to the world championship, we might see teams coming in from this side trying to score on the blue side of the shared hub. And at that point, Upper Creek's going to want to probably put a lot more blocks on the shared hub. That way they can tip it in their favor. And even if they're a little bit slower, that weight will uh, help them score more in the end of the match. So let's go ahead and continue watching this. Meanwhile, their partner, just cycling back and forth, they're doing a simple cycle. Um, a little bit on the... They're, they're definitely cycling, cycling slower than Upper Creek. But because there were already four blocks on top of the on top of the high goal at the end of autonomous not really a big deal also one of the things to notice is upper creek and the red alliance in general is pushing a lot of these balls out of the warehouse uh through these two paths just by being a little rough in there that might be penalized in some regions um but that has allowed uh teams like 18137 to pick up balls from just the ground and score them and now you see there's right here we've got 30 seconds left on the clock Right before 30 seconds, we're going to go back to 36 seconds. And we see 18137, they just did a cycle, the ball dropped. There's two blocks in the back right here. Those are really hard to get. And so, six seconds left, they could probably do another cycle if they wanted to. Uh, 18137 could do another cycle. But getting those two blocks is going to be really hard. So they decide, hey, two blocks, up a creek can handle that in 30 seconds. We're going to head for the ducks. So they're going to go line up for the ducks about three seconds ahead of time. Meanwhile, up a creek, they're gonna now use their turret, right? You can see their robot is pointing in this direction, but their turret is on an angle. So that's one of the cool aspects of their turret design. It allows them to get those corner blocks. And they're now gonna be able to pick up those last two blocks and score them on the top of the high goal. So they're gonna be really careful with displacement. Blocks are easier to stick than the balls. So they get one stacked up there 
and they're going to now do the second one again. Their robot was facing in this direction, and they got their arm in that direction so then they could get in the corner, and they pick up that last block and make it stick. So now, what does Upper Creek do, right? You've got nothing left in the warehouse. You've got a couple balls here, but getting balls to stick up there is going to be really difficult. Really cool strategy right here that we're going to see from the Red Alliance. Upper Creek is going to use their long turret arm to pick up these ducks that are in this corner, right? So they get one duck up, and had they had a little bit more time, they might have been able to get more. They got one duck, and they landed on the top. That's going to be another five points for them. And so in the end of the match, right, two seconds left, they get that duck up there, and then they just all go beeline for the warehouse to get the park. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this. As we see more warehouses getting empty, uh, we're going to see these ducks becoming a lot more valuable, right? You can have up to nine ducks place on the field during endgame, and whoever can score those ducks, they're super light and they're super easy to stick on that high goal. Whoever can get those ducks is going to definitely have an advantage uh, going into worlds and later competitions. So if we take a look, right, everyone gets in for the park, we look at their score, 344 points, world record at the time that they scored it. Um, amazing job by, by that Red Alliance there. Um, one of the other cool things to see here is, uh, we can't really see the tally op score, but the tally op score was one of the highest tally op scores we've seen in a while. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this one analysis. We will see you next time. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. If you want to continue enjoying the excitement of robotics, come check out what's going on at Kettering University, including their Combat BattleBots team and First Center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Be sure to apply to Kettering beginning in August of 2022. Go to kettering.edu apply to learn more. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.